What's up guys, Shane Figure at 3D Printing and today I'm checking out some Zyltec flexible filament. Welcome back guys. So as I said, this is some flexible filament from Zyltec. I think it's their TPU. Uh, let's see, yeah, it's TPU. So uh, this was an early sample that they sent me uh, about a month ago and I just not had gotten around to getting to it. I was hoping to have a more direct, uh, have a direct drive uh, printer here to print with. I can print on the Bowden printers. I have some of them set up for flexible filament. So we're gonna give it a shot on a couple different ones and see how it turns out. But uh, this is the box I sent in. I don't know if this is the retail box, anything. It's a plain brown box, which is the sticker on the side. And it tells me it's a one kilogram of uh, TPU and it's black. I love non-clear filament. So that is great. And let's dig in. Okay, so once we get into it, we have, we're greeted with a little sheet here. And they give you, um, it's just a data sheet basically. It gives you all the different settings you'll need tells you spool specifications, the weight of them, the tolerance of the filaments, uh, notes about the colors. They give you settings for PLA, ABS, PETG, PLA, carbon fiber and wood, HIPS and TPU. And this is a newer thing because they used to have PVA, but they stuck a TPU sticker over top of it. So that's, that's cool. So that's a little bit of a thing in here. Uh, they do offer bulk purchasing. If you order, uh, let's see, five or more spools from Zyltec filament, discounts range from five to 30%, depending on what it is. Uh, if you guys want to check out Zyltec filament, I'll say it right now, I'll tell you guys again later. Uh, I have a 50% coupon I have down in the video description. So if you guys want to check out some of their, any type of their filament or anything on their website, I know it's all their filaments. All the filaments on the website are 15% off. So check those out. And here we are. So it does have a bubble wrap sleeve over it. Get that out of the way. And then here we are greeted with the filament. It's so weird when you get flexible filament because the spools are so flexy. You know, with PLA, they don't really flex that much because PLA is a very stiff material. It is a non-Ziploc bag, sad face. But again, that's asking a lot. Most companies don't do it. I wish they did, but that's okay. We have a Duskin pack. So it's in their classic spool, which I really like because it has all of these windows throughout it. So you can kind of see how much filament you have left on it. And then here it just has the Zyltec sticker on there. And it tells you that it's one kilogram. The filament color is black. It is 1.75 millimeter and it's 3 printing filament TPU. So it's actually a really, really nice wind. A little loose. You know, there's, there's definitely plenty of movement on there. And it is a, I would say a, a scale of 110, one being spaghetti and 10 being super hard filament. This is a good five maybe even a four, four to five, yeah. So it's it definitely has some uh, some stiffness to it. Let's see how it stretches. Mm. That's pretty good. And it goes back 70% of the way, 60% of the way, I'd say. It's not too, too bad there. It snips easily enough. So let's throw this on some printers and see how it turns out. I'm really excited. Let's do some tires maybe. Try and get how we can do vases. I love doing uh, flexible vases, my coin obviously. And I'll see what else I can find on Thingiverse. It might be fun to print and flexible. So I'll be back in a flash with some results of this filament. Welcome back. It's been a while. The background has changed quite a bit. It's been a little longer than a while. It's been a long while. Now, I had problems with the filament. And I can't blame the filament because I have to blame my environment. I now live in the tropics. <laughs> it's wet, it's rainy, it's hot here. Like super hot here. It's super humid here. So I had a huge problem with moisture. And because I had only just arrived, it was a really poor time for me to even attempt to try to print flexible filament. I did not have the solution to be able to print this. I didn't have a filament dryer. I didn't have a way to store the filament. It was just bad all around. But I did get marginal results in the beginning. This was just trash. Um, the filament is very, very rough. You can see the layers a lot, 
but I was able to get it printing on the TiVo Tornado. I had a lot of problems with a few other machines I had at the time as they were all Bowden style machines. Bowden and uh, flexible filament do not blend very well. Can you print with it most of the time? Yes. But even that's like a yeah, maybe. So maybe you can print with it most of the time. Most uh, general, like newer users can't. If you know what you're doing and you can kind of tweak your print a little bit more, yes, you can print uh, flexible film. The super flexible stuff, pretty much no. Need a direct drive. So anyways, I have a couple here that came out okay in the beginning using the TiVo Tornado as a Bowden extruder. I had, does have a Titan clone on there, so that worked out pretty well. It's just the filament is rough. You can definitely tell that it's having issues. Fast forward from there about a month, I got my stuff. And I have a food dehydrator here that I have modified to be able to stack spools in. Modifying me, I cut the mesh out of all the rings, all the rings stack up. I can fit about three to four spools of filament in there at a time to dry out. Also, I created this, which is actually the filament is in right now. This is my filament dryer, my filament storage solution. And this is a Rubbermaid uh, four liter container, which we use for, well we used, this one's mine now because it's all drilled out and wife's not gonna take it back. This was used for storing like dry goods. Like we had like one has flour, one has sugar, one has butter, sugar, brown sugar, all that jazz. So I went and stole one from her and said, I'll buy you a new one. And I printed out some parts for the inside and I'm not happy with how it is right now. I'm gonna change it. I might do a video just on how to do one of these and what I've learned from this. But I try like baking it in the oven and I'm a little afraid to pull this out because um, you can put your filament in the oven to dry. You can do that. But you need to be aware of the temperature. And the problem with mine was, and the problem with this doggone holder in here is it does not want to let it go at all. And it makes me super angry. And I'm just hulking at it for a minute. Okay, now that that's out. Um, I did put it in hot and it bent, it melted part of the uh, spool holder that I made for it. I melted the crap out of the spool and it's all totally jacked up. Uh, I am probably going to re-spool this. I think I have a spare spool somewhere from something I finished, something with a 3D printing can or something like that. The spool, I mean this was the lowest I could get my oven to was 160 Fahrenheit or 150 Fahrenheit. It was 100. Is it 100, 150? As low as I could do it, had the door wide open, put this on a piece of aluminum foil, put it in the middle of the oven, as middle as I could get so it wouldn't be too hot, and let it go. And yeah, four hours later I came to look at it and it looked like this. I was like, crap. It did dry it out a bit, but not, it only dried out like the first, you know, maybe um, 50, 60 meters. After that, it started getting, um, all poppy again and things like that. So that was kind of a mistake. So then I went ahead and again made this just through a PTFE fitting on here with a length of PTFE tubing, enough to fit from my shelf down to the Prusa i3 Mark III. I went, started reprinting this, uh, reprinting with this once I got that printer in. And I just finished up some of the models here recently. But inside of here, I have a bunch of desk packs that I was getting in filament, just throwing it in here. And right now it's down to 20% in there, 77 degrees Fahrenheit in this container. It's a lot hotter out here actually. I got it as low as 12% humidity inside this container once I had dried the filament and I put all these packets in the filament dryer. And I know you're really not supposed to reuse those, but I only just got in my reusable ones like actual reusable silica packs. I went in and 3D printed this on a live stream and this is just to hold all those packs to throw them in. I'm gonna make another one a little bit taller because doing all these, they're almost spilling out. So I put this inside my filament dryer, set it on low, which is about 45 centigrade, roughly. Give or take a little bit, I don't have a probe, it's just the guesstimate, I was the middle guesstimate on the paperwork for that thing. And let it go for overnight, I think I do overnight, yeah not four hours, I do overnight. Put everything in here, 12% humidity, great, and it printed like a dream. And I have some really, really nice prints off the Prusa i3 Mark III, very impressed with it. And it adhered so well, I actually broke some of the PEI on the, that was from the build tack PEI was on there. Had another sheet, slapped it on there, kept printing, life was good. But yeah, I'm actually very happy with how some of this came off on that machine. Actually how all of those came off after doing 
all of the things that need to be done and didn't want to go in this much depth on how I had to get it working, but here we are, I had to do it. But again, I'm gonna do a separate video. I'm gonna redesign parts to this and make it my own. And then I will share it out, do a video just on that and on what type of uh, um, humidity sensor I'm using, the mounts I'm gonna to change to different mounts for that. I'm gonna 3D print my own um, hub unless you have yourself a piece of PVC pipe, which I threw all mine away because I'm an idiot. Should have saved it and cut off a piece, but I didn't, so here we are. I digress, 3D printed my own uh, you know, spool holder for this to, to put down in there. It's a way to do it. It ended up working out for me, so I'm okay with that. I'm gonna put this back in here because I don't wanna dry this out again anytime soon. Well, eventually we'll go into a bag because this is gonna be used for other filaments, but at least this can get closed up. Just to give you a little bit of perspective, I'm sitting at about 75% humidity here in my office. So that is quite the difference between outside humidity and inside that container humidity, which is really good. Uh, we like to see a big difference in that. All right, so now all that boringness is out of the way. Let's take a look. I'm gonna show you just like what a really, really bad print looks like out of flexible filament. In this, you will know that you're having a um, water issue in the filament. So I'll show you this one first. I'll show you the, the, the some of the prints that came off on the Tornado that were okay prints. They definitely don't look that good, but they function all the same. They have very good layer adhesion. They're very flexible. They just don't have that nice shine that you get from very dry uh, flexible filament. And it turned out, again, on the uh, Mark III, really, really nice once it was dried out. Little stringy, but I really enjoyed it. So let's take a look at these. Okay, so here again is the really, really bad one. This is how you know you're having a water issue inside a flexible filament. You can see there's holes in it everywhere. I mean, it does flex, but I mean, the layer adhesion is absolute trash. There's tons of under extrusions because there was so much water that the nozzle was actually boiling off as it was printing. And that's why you hear all that popping. It's literally boiling the water but you can see there are a ton of issues with this print. Now, for a generally okay print, still having water issues, but the, the filament is mostly dry. This is what the results are going to look like. So it's a decent bottom layer. Over supports, it worked well, but you see how it's very like rough and it feels rough. It's not that really nice shiny look to it. It is shiny, but it's not like one even shine to it. It's very rough, very um, scattered and all that. And again, but it's still very flexible. It worked out well. I didn't have any under extrusions when printing this. It just definitely had some water in it. Another print here, this is the Dyson Flexi Nozzle for my Dyson vacuum. I like printing these because I like to use them. Again, very rough. You can see how rough it is. And that was just from the water boiling off the print. And here is a, uh, you would just take like a man strip, put on this and stick it on your desk or something like that. And this is to hold cables, can go in here. You can print this in PLA or flexible film. I like the flexible one. But again, you can see how rough it is. And you can see a little bit of the stringing between there. The TV actually did a great job of this filament. There's very little stringing in there. So I was happy about that. So once you get your filament fully dry, you're gonna get something like this. Look how even the shine is on this. Very even, very nice shine to it. I didn't even pull the support off this one yet. But support comes off with flexible filaments. Generally easy. Sometimes you need to use a pair of flush cutters, not to cut it, but just to be able to get a grip on it because flexible filament is very, very, starts with an L, can't remember the word, but it's very lubricated in, in a sense. It's really not, but it's just the, the way that the, the plastic is, it has this very um, lubricated feel to it. It's not lubricated and it's not the right word. I'm not a word person, but you see how it, like some of it is just a little piece is hard to get off. A pair of flush cutters allows you to grab that bit and then pull at it and be able to pull it away. We have the support underneath. Again, sometimes flux filament isn't really also the, the greatest uh, support. It really shouldn't be used for support at all, but sometimes you have to. And I was also a little bit close to the bed with this on the i3 Mark III. I don't know why it was, but it just was. But if you go ahead and look where the support was, that looks pretty fantastic in there. You can see just a little, a little bit here. Um, I'm not really a fan of how Slicer Prusa Edition does its support, but hey, I can't really change that up too much. 
But there you can see, again, nice even shine. When looking at the Dyson part, again, nice even shine all around it. There's no stringing in there, which is really nice to see. That's a nice part, it bends well. Great layer adhesion. So this will be a really good part to actually use when I go to actually use it. And here we do see a little bit of stringing that was there. Again, I, I got most of it, but down the center you can definitely see there's a bit of stringing in there. But again, nice shine to it. Here's a very cool vase that I found on Thingiverse. If you just search vase, it's one of the top ones that pop up there. And it has these fins that are really fun to play with here and how they sound. But yeah, this also turned out really well. This is actually the one that took off the piece of PEI. I was able to pull it off, but uh, you can almost see through because there's only like three bottom layers there. Oh, and lastly, just this flex. I just searched flex on Thingiverse. This thing popped up. This did have quite a bit of stringing here at the top area. Uh, you can get most of that off with a pair of flush cutters or a flat edge, and I'll just cut that right off. But there was a little bit of stringing on this one. But again, super nice even shine all across it. Bottom layer is very matte as is printed on the PEI and that's actually how flexible filament on glue will come out very matte. But the top is super duper shiny. This was like a 10% info I think, so really flexible. So more of the story is keep your flexible filament dry. It's really hard to do again when you live in the tropics and it's the rainy season, it rains every day, several hours a day. Humidity is well over 70%. Like when it's not raining, it's 70. When it's raining, it's 80, 90% humidity. So it's really, really rough. But there is a way if you know how to get around it and you have a filament dryer and if you're really into 3D printing and you do live anywhere south of probably South Carolina, whatever that uh, line is across the world, if you're anywhere in the middle part, you're going to want to have a filament dryer for almost any of your filaments. PLA is not as bad. Some PLAs are. PATG is not too bad, but flexible filament, uh, it's super hydroscopic, so it's going to suck in that moisture so quickly, it's going to come out bad. Like me just having that out. I bet you if I do a print off of that, it's going to come out bad just because I had it out for that what, few minutes. So I have to dry it again. So I want to thank Ziltec for sending me this filament to try out. It, it does work well when it's dry. So that's kind of, again, the big more of the story here for anyone printing. Keep the filament dry. But I, I think it came out really well. And I would definitely would buy this if I, if I needed it. When I made that giant Lego cart, I bought some filament. I ended up buying the uh, 3D Solutec flexible filament. I definitely would have bought this. This definitely would have been a, a good option to, uh, to print with. And if I ever have a need to do a large, uh, printing an entire spool of flexible filament, this probably would be the next thing I'm gonna buy to try out. So again, thank you to Ziltec, and they sent this to me free of charge. The purpose of this review, this is a newer filament. When they sent it to me, it's been out a little while now. But again, it took me so long to receive it, and then by the time I got to printing, had to fix things, it took me a while to get it. So I hope you guys, if you have tried it out, let me know how it turned out for you. If you're looking to try out some flexible filament, give this a shot, let me know how it turns out. But yeah, anyways, that was what I was saying. Yeah, they didn't pay me anything like that. So that's the normal, no one pays me for stuff. I'm just the cheap help. <laughs> they send me a roll and here I am. So if you guys wanna check this filament out, I'll put a link down in the video description. Go ahead and click that and then use my coupon code that I have down there. You get 15% off Ziltec filament. That's a pretty good discount, I would say. And I thoroughly enjoy that discount as I bought an entire rack over here of filament from them that I'm gonna be using for other projects. So if you guys wanna check out again, 50% discount, go down below and check that out. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry it took so long to finish all this and I saw it was a little bit longer than normal. I just again had to talk about the, um, you know, the, the moisture in filament. You really did have to talk about that in this video. So, and yeah, thanks for watching. So thumbs up if you liked the video, become a subscriber, uh, hit the bell icon to get new notification when I upload new content or push notification on mobile device. If you want to get access to the after show, become a patron, or if you just want to help me out, donate me a dollar. Uh, it really does help. The more people that ha uh, help out, the more projects I can do. I can buy more things. I can afford big items. So my current patrons, thank you guys. And if you want to donate me any other ways, there's a one-time links down below. And there's a bunch of fill links with coupon codes. Ziltec, 15% off your filament. Head down there. Check that out. And a little slice of what you buy ends up coming back here to help me out the channel. I thank you guys for watching. Until next time, happy printing.